Okay guys, a really quick video for you guys, not a live stream, a video this time. I have been working on this B2 Audio M1S amplifier and this uses a relatively generic sort of circuit layout. It uses four IRS2844S uh, drive ICs and it's a classic half bridge design. Um, it's using 24N40Fs on the output MOSFETs which is again very common. We've got 15 volt regulators, 12 volt regulators, 5 volt regulators on the driver board feeding it um, and power supply again is pretty generic it's uh, just using 064 ns um, and the uh, 494 chip so yeah all in all a very reliable and sort of well polished board design that's been around for many many years um, good build quality from b2 here now this amplifier came in with um, two banks of output FETs dead and the reason for those I believe was excessive heat on the driver board. Um, this amplifier was used in a very very hot sunny day competition uh, over here in the UK and it was ran for many hours and I believe that the IRS2844S chips which run pretty hot anyway as they are um, in a hot environment with the case heating up and you know lack of airflow through the case I think they just overheated one of them shorted out and killed because um, the, the, the dry the effects which were dead were just the high and low on the one drive IC that was dead all the others were fine all the other drive ICs were fine however when I came to repair it I obviously removed the uh, the six FETs here that were dead I removed the drive IC that was dead replaced it and stuck a couple of FETs in the output section and when I powered it up it wouldn't work it kept swinging to negative rail uh, on the output on the speaker terminals the uh, the FETs would turn on fully um, and then the amplifier would go into protection because it would notice DC on the speaker terminals which was a little confusing so um, I've pulled it apart, I've taken all the FETs out in case there was one or two FETs that were slightly sh leaking or something. And uh, I've replaced that, i pulled a brand new, uh, a freshly, freshly populated driver board, I've got loads of spare driver boards, so I completely changed out the driver board. Um, and with all the FETs out of the board, it seems to be doing the same thing. I couldn't work out why on earth is this driver board turning the FETs on fully early and therefore causing DC to end up on the speaker terminals. So to find that out, obviously, to, so to, to show you that happening, what I'm gonna do is show you that here. So I'm gonna take both of my oscilloscope probes here. I've got well, channel one and channel two. I'm gonna put channel uh, number one on the low side gate because it was swinging to negative rail, okay? So we're gonna put channel one on the low side gate and channel two on the source which is also the negative rail and just to show you that up close we should be able to do this here so as you can see there there's a bit of wire in the way we've got probe number one on the gate this will focus it just takes a little while whether it will focus before i get bored or not is another question so yeah we've got probe number one on the gate probe number two on the source and on the scope screen there we'll be able to see both of those uh, build to the negative rail uh, now, in order for the FETs not to uh, turn on suddenly, these the voltage on these two pads needs to build equally. So it will swing to negative rail. I'll turn the scope in a minute, and um, then you should see the, um, the they stay exactly equal. So the two lines on the scope should stay exactly equal down to negative rail, and then one of them on the gate should start to oscillate and become a square wave. If there is difference between the gate and the source, so if they if it starts to build negative rail and then the gate changes and then starts to oscillate them, whilst it's different, there'll be some DC on the speaker terminals because all the FETs are turned on. And that's what we don't want to see. So if I turn my attention here now to the scope screen and I start turning the amplifier on, something to note that over here on my, uh, my power supply screen, I've got 9.2 volts going in, which is more than enough to get the amplifier from running, but I'm only allowing about 3.3, no, screw it, let's, let's allow, Let's allow 2.6 amps to pass. So always, when I'm repairing these amplifiers, I always have a low current supply to start with to make sure the amplifier is working fine. So let's turn the amplifier on, and we'll be able to see the two um, the two rails here start to build, or the two pads here with the rail voltage on them start to build, and I'll show you what I mean. So. Here we go, starting to build. So th th this is actually two lines here, but they're overlapping each other because they're obviously the same voltage. Okay, look, did you see that? So one of the lines strayed and was much lower than the other line, and therefore when that happens, all the FETs will have been turned on, and there will have been DC, uh, negative DC voltage on the speaker terminals. Um, 
So let's see if I can do that again. It only does it as it's building the the the, uh, the rail. Okay. Let's see. Uh, there you go. See, so it fits on on all this time. Loads of DC. Loads of DC. And only when it builds to the the full rail voltage do we actually see the square wave present, which is looks like this. So if I remove number two, you can see the square wave there is present. That's what it should look like, um, and that's the effects being turned on, off, on, off, on, off, etc. So, yeah. If I now um, short out the rails so it, we can we can get it back down to, to zero, so I can do that again for you just to confirm, see exactly what I mean. Let's short out these rails with uh, I've got a what is it a four eight twelve a sixteen ohm um, resistor here pulling the rails down to ground. Okay, so do it one more time for you. Zoom in a little bit on here so we can see if I can zoom in a bit. There we go. And in a minute, we should see them start to vary. There we go. Suddenly, they're different, and now the FETs are turned on fully. And only when the thing builds to the full rail, we get the square waves. So this was actually, I was scratching my head for a while, I, I checked all the components, I, I tried a different driver board and I couldn't work out why the bloody hell is this thing doing that. I don't see that happen on any other uh, versions of this circuit or this board uh, with a low current supply. So I was very confused and I've been working on this for a couple of hours now trying to work out where the damn issue is. Um, and I had an idea uh, just a moment ago where I thought, okay, I wonder what happens if we actually give this thing some more current to turn on with. Now, like I say, with 99% of these amplifiers that I work on and repair, you, you only need to use a very small low current supply, which allows the rail voltage to build as slowly like we saw then. Um, and that will then give you lots of warning time and lots of time to quickly turn the amplifier off if there's a problem and things start to heat up or something's going to explode. Um, that's why we use a low current supplier, obviously. But just out of curiosity and kind of as a last resort, I, just, I thought, okay, screw this. Let's whack it up to the full current. Let's give this thing 20 amps to turn on with, which is the full that I can do on my laboratory power supply. Uh, obviously more with my uh, bench test supplies, but I don't want to do that just yet. It's a little bit scary with about 350, 400 amps on tap. Don't more like the idea of that. So let's put 20 amps in and let's see whether it does the same thing. Thing. So, let's turn that for now and see whether we have that uh, that deviance or that variance on the gate which is causing DC to be on the FETs. Remote turning on now. No, we do not. What happens is, because it's turning on nice and quickly, as it would do in a vehicle, the square wave builds instantly. So the square wave literally appears uh, like pretty much instantly, even before the rail has reached its, its top. And there's none of that kind of DC which is going to occur on the FETs. So, the issue with this amplifier was not an actual issue with the amplifier, it was just a really strange phenomenon um, to do with how I was testing this. And it, it only appears to occur with this specific amplifier board. Like I say, I've worked on extremely, pretty much identical boards to this uh, from various different brands like Distal Designs, Ground Zero, Sundown Audio, DC Audio. Uh, it's all the same basic circuit. Um, and none of those exhibit this property that you have to turn the amplifier on with significant current in order for the square wave to build at the correct time and prevent there from being DC on the speaker terminals. So very interesting. I wanted to share this with you because like myself, if you have an amplifier like this and you're running at a low current supply and you are getting DC on the speaker terminals and you can't figure out why, um, then this is possibly something to try by turning up the current on your bench power supply and seeing whether the amp actually comes on fully without needing uh, the low current there. 